All right, I got a question here from a noun, or I'm sorry, uh, an ounce of salt per day. All right, so this is a great question. So let me read his comment question, and then I'll respond. He says, what are your thoughts on the model I am about to propose to you? Jesus Christ returned in the clouds while the soldiers that pierced him were still alive and destroyed the empires of the world. Evidence for this is ancient Rome buried under 30 feet of mud and clay, Roman baths buried under 30 feet of soil all over England and Europe, the destruction of South American civilizations, etc., etc. We then has the thousand of years of Jesus Christ rule. The evidence for this being the incredible buildings around the world that were built up until about 1800. The key evidence being that the Bible has been the basis of law around the world. The Christian message was everywhere by that time when Satan was released the Christian population was taken up into the air this explains the empty cities of the early 1800s alright so thank you for that and let me <clears throat> I'll go over this <clears throat> the first thing that I, I thought of when I was reading this I want to share this thought with you first okay so in 1979 we as a family moved to Kellogg all right and then as a nine-year-old I noticed outside of some of the homes here in Kellogg there were these cement blocks or the cement uh, post here and they had a little ring on top of it and, and I didn't understand what it was you know we uh, I grew up in the in the country on a farmhouse uh, before we moved here to Kellogg and uh, I'd never seen anything like it so I asked somebody I don't know if it was mom dad or, or somebody in the, somebody around here and they told me that the, these are old hitching posts that they would hitch their horse to right so that's fascinating uh, around a number of these homes around here in Kellogg there was these hitching posts and I never saw you know very many horses uh, you know on occasion we'd see horses but not very often and we certainly didn't see them outside of these homes that had all these hitching posts there's you know a couple of homes outside just on the edge of town that had horses one on the west side one on the east side that I can recall and but you know these hitching posts were right here in town and I'd see one or two on the way uh, to walking to school and I think they've since taken them all down they're not there anymore so it's interesting because as a nine-year-old you know it's hard to imagine a time when there was no cars right now that I'm older it's probably hard for people to imagine a time when there was no laptop computer and no internet and uh, you know when when I was growing up you know we didn't have color TV we didn't have cable uh, so the world has changed a lot and it, as a nine-year-old that's hard to really comprehend but uh, the reason why um, I bring this up these hitching posts is because uh, you know what happened to the horses well you know one possible theory you could come up with is well the horses were raptured away I mean where'd they go well they got replaced right it's really that simple but I mean you could come up with different ideas 
you could and reasonably so but it's not all that reasonable really just to say ah, they the Lord came and took them and they ascended to heaven that's not reasonable okay it, it's it's not that unreasonable but it's not it's not realistic okay so in regards to this question I'm assuming this is uh, mud you know I see the word mud so this is in relation to um, what I've heard regarding the mud flood uh, theory or whatever you want to call it uh, so I've seen this uh, a couple of times uh, you know that it's interesting uh, when these guys they show these ancient cities and um, you know pretty cool stuff but there's a little bit of a problem <laughs> to say the least with this idea uh, so let's tack there's a number of ideas on the table here so let's tackle the first one here that should be the easiest here all right and this is the the Christian population was taken up in the air all right and that would account for why there's so many empty cities okay so first of all let's get into this um, I'll do a search for resurrection past and we read here in 2nd Timothy let me open this up verse 18 says who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some now this is exactly what the mud flood theory is and this verse here is not written in vain there's a reason for it and that is because there are people who teach the resurrection is past already and of course if you believe the resurrection has already happened how can you say that you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who is promised to return and to bring us up with him into the clouds the resurrection if you believe it's already passed how can you believe it's gonna happen all right and there's no mention at all of any of uh, this idea of two resurrections that's not in the Bible there was Jesus who was the first fruit to them that slept right and just in case you know th and this is very important I think you don't want people to, to fool you right in 1 Corinthians 15 but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept so again now we'll go to Revelation 20 and we see the first resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection we are partakers of his resurrection of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and just like what we read in John 14 and my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also alright so that's a promise and either it's fulfilled or it's not there are no two coming backs all right now if we go to Matthew 24 and we see that Jesus is asked specifically what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world all right and so the end of the world is when Jesus comes back all right when he comes in the clouds of heaven and he will send his angels and they shall gather together his elect this is the end of the world make no mistake about that now in Matthew 13 
Jesus gives a parable of the wheat and the tares and he describes the harvest as the end of the world and of course uh, the harvest is when the wheat which are those of us that are saved are gathered into his barn and then the tares are put in bundles and burned this is at the end of the world so if anybody makes the claim that the Christian population was already taken up that would mean everybody else was burned they were put to death they were killed and not just killed but killed forever the second death all right. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power. Right? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Then death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. So that you on one hand you got the saved being lifted up into the clouds of heaven, and then on the other hand you've got the unsaved being destroyed forever all right there is no separation there there is no two judgments of God or two second comings of the Lord Jesus Christ okay so that's and this is what happens when people don't trust the Word of God and they instead trust the words of men now I don't know if it's I, I you know you can look at it in a number of different ways okay so you can say well people are just lazy they don't want to read the Bible they'd rather just sit back and watch a video of somebody pretending to teach the Word of God I understand I understand that it's it's all that's what I do sometimes you know I sit back and I listen to what other people are teaching but every single time you've got to verify what they're teaching and I learned this lesson the hard way years ago when I first became a Bible Bible believing Christian I would watch John Hagee I would watch a Rex Ella and Jack Van Empey and I would I would watch Hal Lindsey and I would you know I'd watch them and I think oh, you know I'm not sure like he like he got that right you know I'm not sure that's right and then so I started recording their shows and once I started recording their shows that was kind of the end for me of watching those guys because I would pause I would look up the verses and they would get it wrong yeah I mean you can understand somebody like Jack Van MP kind of an old guy you know back in the early 2000s you know m you know maybe he just forgot but man when their whole doctrine is based on something that is way off you you've got to question their doctrines I mean you've got to question everything I mean it's it for me I'm still PO'd and TO'd that I was lied to when I was a little child I was lied to about you know this idea I, I was told I was a little monkey and I evolved from a monkey and that automatically gave me the impression that I was hoping to evolve into a UFO alien I mean I was fool I, had, I was made out to be a dummy of course I was a dummy and they just took advantage of it just like they're still doing it today so I'm not gonna let Jack Van Empey John Hagee and all those other guys fool me again I'm gonna verify everything that they're teaching all right and what I've discovered is people aren't teaching what they read in the Bible they're teaching what other men have taught them that's how you get all these strange doctrines it is because of men of no faith they don't put their faith in the Word of God instead they put their faith in the words of men and this is in my opinion this is where this mud floods theory comes from is a lack of faith it's fascinating 
and it, I'm sure it's popular. I don't doubt that at all. Let me see here. Oh, well, this guy maybe, maybe he's not so popular, but I, you know, who cares really? Uh, I assume it's popular, but I mean, it's fascinating stuff. No question about it. When they, um, you know, they survey the landscape, if you will, and they find all these ancient ruins, that's cool stuff. But this theory that the resurrection has passed already? No, that's not cool. Alright, so let me go over this here. Uh, was there something? Oh, okay. So the ancient Rome is something I wanted to talk about. Okay, so let's go to Revelation 1 real quickly. And behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. Now, even they, or they also which pierced him. Alright, so let's go to, uh, now, let me, let me make this clear. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, this is the end of the world. I showed you that, right? Matthew 24. Alright, so everybody's going to see him. Alright, in Luke 21, it talks about men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking upon the things uh, that are coming on the earth. Right? And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Um, all the earth will mourn. Alright. And then. Uh, you know. And like what we read in, in Matthew 24 as well. This is when we are resurrected. When we are lifted up. Alright. When you see these things begin to come to pass. And look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh now as we read in first Thessalonians well no let's go to first Corinthians 15 first all right so in first Corinthians 15 when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven um, and here Paul says behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. Now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Did I spell that right? Okay. In 1 Thessalonians 4, the same, this is the same moment in time when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the end of the world. And we are lifted up. And just as I shown you in Matthew 13, the harvest, we are gathered into his barn, into the barn of God, if you will. And then the unsaved are put in bundles and they are burned. This is at the end of the world. So that, it, that doesn't leave anybody. That, that covers everybody, right? So real quickly, let's go... To uh, Daniel 12 and we see that many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt this happens at the end of the world so Daniel deals uh, quite a bit with the end of the world and you know I'd like to get into all of that well let me yeah let me real quickly get into it because there's a question mark here about ancient Rome all right so let me cover that right now 
So Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And those four beasts are four kingdoms which shall arise out of the earth. Let me find a simple verse. Uh, I think I, here we go. No? Oh, goodness sakes. I have to, I got the extra letter. All right, so let's go. Here we go. All right. Daniel 7, verse 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Now the first king, the first three kings are mentioned by Daniel. The first king is Babylon. The second king is the Medes and Persians. And the fourth king, or beast, is, I'm sorry, the third beast, excuse me, is the Greek Empire. All right, so you got the Babylonian Empire, you got the Medes and the Persian Empire, you got the Greek Empire, and Daniel never mentions the fourth, because the fourth hadn't come at that time yet. But we can deduce who the fourth king is, or the fourth beast, by uh, just opening up your New Testament, really. But specifically in Luke chapter 2, we see that Caesar Augustus had power that he made a decree that the whole world should be taxed. All right, so this is obviously the fourth king or the fourth beast. This is the Roman Empire. Okay, Caesar Augustus we know as the Roman Emperor. And therefore we can conclude that the fourth beast must be the Roman Empire. Now, the end of the world comes, and you can read this in Daniel, okay? When the end of the world comes, that fourth beast is destroyed, and there's a new kingdom set up, much greater than, than any of the kings or beasts of this earth, okay? Now, this fourth beast, though, however, it is in the spirit of the first beast, which is Babylon, and it is far greater than the first three beasts. Far more powerful and destructive. <clears throat> Alright, so, and then we read about this fourth beast in the book of Revelation. Alright, so, there's uh, this comment here about ancient Rome. Alright, so, so, okay, so the question might be, well, there is no more Roman Empire. Oh, yeah, there is. So let's go to Revelation 17. I mean, if there was no more Roman Empire, if the fourth king was already uh, over, <laughs> then it would be the end of the world, and the mud flood stuff would make sense. The problem is... We also would have to be in our resurrected body and live forever with no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, and no more death. And of course, that's not the world we're living in, right? <clears throat> now, in Revelation 17, talking about the great whore, um, the angel says to John, he says, I will show you the dread, the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. Okay, so the great whore is the beast of Revelation. All right, and it's also Babylon the Great. So it's in the spirit of the first beast. All right, so this is clearly talking about the fourth beast of Daniel. All right, now in verse 8, it says... Uh, when they behold the beast that was, talking about the Roman Empire, and is not, and yet is. All right. So, <clears throat> how how do you uh, you know reconcile or come you know how do you solve this problem, if you will, the beast that was and is not and yet is. So there was the Roman Empire. It was a physical empire, just like, um, you know, like if the United States took over the whole world and the, everybody was the United States. 
and that's not the case no matter what anybody tells you that's not happening it'll never happen but let's just imagine that's happening um you know then that you know you could say well that's that's the united states empire they rule the entire world well the united states does not rule the entire world but the roman empire did rule the entire world just as the babylon empire ruled over the entire world then it was the medes and persians and then it was the greek empire now it's the roman empire and it's interesting here you noticed one the great whore all right, so the whore, what do you think of a whore or a prostitute, what are they? They, you know, pretend to do the duties of the wife, right? They're not the wife. They're not the bride, but they are performing duties as though they were the wife, right? But they're not. And so this, you think of the church, and being the bride of Christ all right that's the true church is the true bride this woman is a great whore all right so this only you, you can narrow this down to one entity and that's the Roman Catholic Church all right so uh, the great whore that sits upon many waters what's that mean well, it tells us exactly what it means. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is spread out all across the world. All right, so it, what happened here in verse 8, the beast that was and is not and yet is, there was a transition or a transformation of a physical empire into a spiritual empire known today as the Roman Catholic Church. So you see that buildings of ancient Rome have all, you know, not maybe not all, but most all of them have collapsed. They're buried like, like mentioned here under 30 feet of soil. But that doesn't mean that the Roman Empire went away. In fact, the Roman Empire transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church. So uh, thanks for this comment. An ounce of salt per day. I'm not sure what an ounce of salt per day will do. But I like salt. key evidence okay so I hope that covers everything um, you know if I miss something here um, just let me know and I'll you know follow up on this conversation it's always good to have conversation it, uh, it helps me to learn it helps me to learn stuff when I talk about this stuff and maybe it'll help you learn as well when you talk about this stuff right so if you want, uh, let's continue the conversation. And uh, thanks again for that question. It's a great one.